Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John Coleman and I are speaking with Manny Pacheco, the forgotten Hollywood maven of Celebrating Act 2 land. <laughs> It's right next to the Manny on your map. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Manny, um, uh, you're our go-to guy for all things Hollywood. And I was reading recently some interesting stuff about the famous director, Billy Wilder. And, of course, we know him for all those great comedies he did. But there's more to him than that. And I thought you ought to share it with us. Yeah. You know, there was a real social conscience behind Billy Wilder. He was born in Austria. He had to leave uh, Europe because of uh, what Hitler was doing during uh, before and uh, World War II, obviously at the at the advent of World War II, and boy was Hollywood lucky to get Billy Wilder. I mean, how lucky were we? I mean, there was a, a host of actors that that would join that list. I mean, Peter Lorre comes to mind, for example, or S. Z. Sakal. But Billy Wilder was truly a wonderful and gifted writer turned director and producer and made a litany of films that arguably spoke to the societal changes of what was going on in America, uh, primarily in the post-war era. And it can begin with his creation with uh, Raymond Chandler, the the noted crime uh, crime, uh, writer, uh, in what they did with Double Indemnity. They didn't create film noir, but they were really important at defining what film noir could be as a genre and uh, was able to convince Barbara Stanwyck, who was known for playing um, heroic, maybe tragic figures, rarely playing the vile, weird uh, woman that she would play uh, in, in Double Indemnity. She even had to wear just this awful wig. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, uh, turned in a, a terrific performance and support was Edward G. Robinson. Of course, Fred McMurray was in the film. But they it defines film noir. It defines the flawed hero. It defines the darkness that was sweeping the globe. We had seen what Hitler had done, what the, the Japanese had done. And Billy Wilder did not see the, the globe, the world, as this Pollyannish you know, film code, you know, the good guy wins, the bad guy loses. If you if you commit a crime, you have to pay the, the price. He saw things that were very mixed and very conflicted. And one of his next films after that really articulates that well, and that's The Lost Weekend with the Ray Milland. Oh, and that yeah. was an expose on, on alcoholism. And it earned Milland a, a, an Academy Award. Hmm. Now, Manny... Those two films, uh, I didn't had never realized, I think, that they were Billy Wilder films because they're so different than what he's known for, right. which is the lighthearted comedy. Oh, Sabrina, right. Some Like It Hot, yeah. La Deuce. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Stalag 17 arguably is a, a really funny comedy, although it, it really does poke fun at, at, you know, you're poking the bear there with with Hitler and the Stalag camps and all that, but it's still a yeah. comedy, essentially. Yeah. yeah. So but, how do you square those two? Well, he just, because he's just a gifted director and a great writer because he would write all his material. I mean, his, his material was directed and his words are in the in the mouths of the actors. And he worked with the best. I mean, he worked with Kirk Douglas. Oh, yeah. Uh, he worked with uh, Gary Cooper. Uh, three films with William Holden. Four films with, or five films with Jack Lemmon. Mm. Uh, Ray Moland, I just mentioned, and Barbara Stanwyck. Yeah. Uh, worked with just some of the greats, uh, Tyrone Power, Marlena Dietrich, worked with them all. And, yeah. and, and, he, and he wasn't afraid to tackle a genre, but he did it on his own terms, much like his uh, contemporary Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, I would say that Billy Wilder's golden years paralleled Alfred Hitchcock to a T. His big film uh, in 1950, which really defined in the most caustic way Two things: the, the, uh, the again the uh, the genre of film noir, but also that type of film that loves to look at Hollywood and then you know examine it in a very very cynical way, you know, like A Star Is Born, 
or yeah. you know those kind of you know those kind of films. But Sunset Boulevard was probably the best of the bunch when it came to taking Hollywood and tearing it apart. Oh, there's no and, doubt about that. Yeah. And it's it, it's considered a black comedy, but really, if you take away the the witty writing, it's a really sad expose of what Hollywood is was and is today yeah. mm. and it, it's it's a struggle it, it sometimes leads to tragedy as most of these films mention and and he was the best at, at presenting that and, and gloria swanson delivered one of the most iconic performances oh, and you sure. only get that from um yeah from uh, still Billy imitated Wilder. but today. I, I will tell you one thing billy wilder had a great sense of humor he wanted to get this past the um the the film code and the studios so when they asked him what he was working on the working title he used was A Can of Beans. The name of the <laughs> film is A Can of Beans. How bad can that be? Uh, so, so uh, uh, Manny, um, I basically only know of, uh, of Billy Wilder through his films, uh, it, what, what's on the screen. But you were talking about his social activism. Was that really basically expressed through his films? Or yes. did, was he involved as some other... Uh, 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 stars are who uh, protested or ran organizations. Was it primarily through his work? Well, I think if he had been really a social activist at at that time, he might have been labeled, you know, by the House on American Activities Committee, and, and that never happened. So I don't think he was as socially active as as some might think. He was very socially active in the in the stories he told, and I think one of the most caustic was the film that he made after Sunset Boulevard, which was considered a flop, but somehow it's in the National Registry because it's now today considered a, a, a modern cl a classic, and that's Ace in the Hole with Kirk Douglas, which really looked at journalism, and again, the same that same caustic way that he would look at Hollywood, he took a bite in journalism, and it's a riveting film. In fact, it is so good, and it is so important that I, I encourage my, my my students at the colleges that I teach to watch the film. I have a copy that I lend out to my students. I want them to understand that broadcasting and journalism have a real responsibility, and this film really targets that responsibility. Mm -hmm. Ace you know, in the I've, Hole. I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I recommend it I've got so to go much. Get it. I can't even tell you. It's such a great film. Yeah. yeah. But then Manny, thank you so much. Well, let me just, before we go, I just want to mention a few of the other films, just so you get a whole idea of what I'm talking about. Sabrina, okay. of course, was a comedy. Stalag 17, which we mentioned, earned okay. William Holden an Academy Award. A Witness for the Prosecution was a whodunit in an Agatha, Agatha Christie style with Tyrone Power mm -hmm. and, and Marlena Dietrich. Of course, he made Love in the Afternoon with Audrey Hepburn and... and um, I uh, forgot um, about Gary that, yeah. Yeah, Gary Cooper. But here's one. I, I would really, I want to make, make two points here, and then we can call it a day. One, I think Billy Wilder was better at defining the mystique of Marilyn Monroe than anybody. And if that doesn't change the way we look at society, I don't know what does. But his films, uh, Some Like It Hot and The Seven Year Itch, really magnified and solidified the Marilyn Monroe mystique. And for that, we should be grateful. Number two, his crowning achievement, which won the best picture of the year, was The Apartment in 1960, yeah. with, again, Fred McMurray, again, Jack Lemmon, and a wonderful performance by Shirley MacLaine. Yes. It is a magnificent film that looks at suburbia and, again, tears it down in the way only Billy Wilder could in its very sarcastic, caustic way. It's a beautiful film, and The Apartment was his crowning achievement. He followed that up with one, two, three, uh, the last film for about 20 years of James Cagney. He would go on to make one or two others, but 20 years later. And that was really, really good as well. And then Irma LaDuce. And he did a remake of The Front Page. Uh, oh, one more thing I want to mention. When he did The Fortune Cookie, that started the partnership between Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. Not The Odd Couple. It was The Fortune Cookie. And The Fortune Cookie was a magnificent look at insurance companies and sports. Again, and he tore them down the way he would naturally tear down uh, the way we look at those those uh, ideas, those social conscious ideas. And he was very good at, at making fun and tearing down um, uh, norms. And that, it, that was really the essence of what Billy Wilder was. Hmm. And you know what, that's a, that's a great take on Billy Wilder because he had such a large body of work 
Um, and most of them, you, you've got to, because you laugh at them. You you just enjoy the stories and you, they keep you, they're lighthearted, but you're absolutely right. There is an underlying theme on all of them of a social commentary. That's right. It's not too heavy. You know, you don't feel like you're being beat over the head with a message, no. but it's there. And I, that's I, great I would argue that you're absolutely correct, except in two examples. He beats you over the head with the last weekend for sure. Yeah. And he does kind of beat you over the head with Ace in the Hole. But other than that, the other ones you do, you laugh, you are marvel yep. at, the, at the screenplay and the words, and you don't feel like you're being beat up in the movies. Yeah, yeah. Manic, thank you again. Oh, my pleasure, yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.